Okay, it's day 40. It's currently 2.54 p.m. And as you can see, the sun is actually barely getting to the plants now on the bench. So perhaps my previous estimate of these plants getting two hours of solid natural light was misguided. You know, the sun goes down at five something these days. Probably 5.30 would be a good guess. So as you can see up here, this is the view from uh, my balcony of the living room so the wall of the balcony and the hill block out a lot of the sunlight you know early on and before dusk so perhaps my estimate of these plants getting two hours of solid sunlight a day natural light or misguided and you know when the sun gets strong like this in the afternoon I can turn off the light and you know it actually still makes a difference because the light isn't all over the plant yet but you know when this sun comes across here in a few minutes it'll definitely make a huge difference to the point where I could probably turn off the lamp and that would have almost no net effect on the intensity of light that's hitting these leaves. So regarding this most dominant plant, the sole survivor so to speak, of the first generation, it's doing okay, it's still in stasis. As you can see, the second true leaf really hasn't grown. The cotyledons are withered, although there's still some green. Um, if you look right here, I don't know what that's about, but uh, you know, the development's pretty stable and stagnant here. So a few things have happened. Um, here's a hot spot of activity. Uh, two new seeds are germinating. In fact, if you look at this spot here, um, I sprayed some Lysol yesterday night. And I've gone back to sort of doing my sprayings of water and Lysol by micromanaging, so to speak. I'm basically spraying in the spots where I need it to be. Uh, I think the whole watering with a cup thing is a disaster. It's proven to be a disaster for a bowl this small with no drainage. There's no room for error. So this is promising. You know, these two showed up overnight uh, just by that little spraying of the surface. And I guess Lysol doesn't affect the germination process. So I would say based on the evidence thus far, I'd still have to say Lysol is, you know, it, it's not damaging to the plants to the point where they can't grow at all. So I would really wait for more evidence before I blame Lysol for uh, growth stagnation or anything like that. And for this main plant, I basically sprayed some distilled water right on top of where the root meets the stem meets the soil and I'm hoping that means that water will trickle down along the root system and give this plant the water it needs. So this thing is clearly rotting and I sprayed some lice on it to prevent uh, accelerated molding. Uh, I do want it to just kind of rot away or I'll, maybe I'll just throw it away later but I don't want you know mold filament spreading spores everywhere. So this was a definite example of something that's growing uh, since I last videotaped it two days ago so I can't see the stem root action but there are two giant cotyledons coming out of the seedling the seed husk so so this is your classic case of an upside down plant it's happened a few times in this entire experiment and the leaves the cotyledons and the seed husk are stuck to the soil you know the root has thinned out to the point where you know that thin thread you see is basically the soil connection between a water source the ground and the plant which is upside down so I spot sprayed the where the root meets the soil with some distilled water just a, you know 12 hours ago maybe and for the time being it'll do okay I don't know if this root will get thicker and eventually the plant can maybe right itself but uh, in the past if there's any indication you know it won't happen and this might die okay so it's uh, 3 2 p.m. right now and as you can see the potted plants are getting full sunlight, full natural light. And let's see what happens if I turn this off. That makes a small difference, but at this point it's really the natural light that outshines that by, uh, I don't know, would you say this is uh, maybe tenfold or twentyfold, you know. So another topic I mentioned earlier was the fact that glass blocks out a great percentage of UV light, at least in the very short wavelengths that can cause uh, skin cancer and so forth or sunburns. So some people claim that they've gotten sunburned within a car or uh, behind glass. Um, 
I suppose if it, even a small fraction of UV light in very short wavelength range got through glass, even like 1% or 0.1%, you could get sunburned under very severe summer direct sunlight conditions. But in most cases, uh, I would say no. And for this topic, all it pertains to is, you know, do we have enough UV to kill mold? And indoors, I would definitely say not. So one thing I just read was that mold grows four times as slow in UV light as it does without. And that's not really encouraging because even if I were to place this outside and expose this plant to the cold winter temperatures of February, it would still grow mold. So, you know, I don't know what to say. I guess outdoors, um, there's a lot of soil, so water would just kind of drain away. But, um, you know, if you water every day in the same spot, I'm sure even in a garden, it's going to grow mold. Um, if not on the surface, underneath at least. So I think all plants basically just have to deal with it and rely on their innate immune systems to kind of fend that off from getting infected. Now, for a lot of plants, if it's too moist, then they will have root rot. So I think, you know, the spot watering that I'm going back to that I did in the beginning might just be the recipe for uh, success to prevent further mold growth or at least to prevent it from growing way too fast where we're seeing uh, all these uh, fruiting structures uh, ready to release mold spores almost every day. Right now it's about 4.21 p.m. and as you can see the light is dying out. The angle of the sun has changed and as you can see uh, I showed you earlier that hill is in the way. So by now it really has been um, maybe an hour and a half and there's no more sunlight in the bowl except at this very edge here. And so it's totally different from light during the summer or spring, you know, when this plant is probably intended to grow. Okay, it's day 41 and there's been a strong response to the sun. As you can see, this plant has uh, curled a little bit towards the sun instead of the LED light. So it's been staying in the same position for, I don't know, like 10 days or more. So, you know, let's see how long it is. I'd say it's back to being about an inch long and 14 sixteenths of an inch wide. So this plant's been in the sun for about four days now and other than phototropism there hasn't really been all that much evidence of growth. So as for these other seedlings not much is going on. I'm just doing some spot watering through spring and you know they've made a little bit of progress but you know I'm not really measuring I'm just gauging visually every day. So these might be the last few seedlings that ever germinate from this bowl. Um, pretty much all the other ones that were earlier uh, died or some of them rotted and I threw them away. So the mold situation seems to be under control for now. Okay, it's day 43 and as you can see um, these are not progressing too well. I would say uh, it looks like they could establish themselves but you know two of these, the ones on the right are basically upside down. So that one's not really upside down, it's sort of, uh, you know, just kind of curled like that. And then it's not, you know, extending any roots down into the moist soil as far as I can see. So I don't think it's going to survive, uh, even though it's green right now. And, you know, this one in front of us is very threadbare in its connection. The root that's exposed to the air is just dried out. So I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, it seems like there could be another one that's uh, germinating here, but uh, this seedling has had a lot of mold on its husks, so I don't know about that either. So in this case, I don't know what's going on either. It just seems to be, you know, a cotyledon or two sticking out of a seed husk, and this thing still hasn't, hasn't been able to right itself. Let's see if we spin this bowl... Yeah, you know, I don't really even know what I'm looking at here. It just seems to be one cotyledon facing the dirt and with no discernible establishment into the soil. And if we look over here, okay, this one could do fine unless it does the same thing. If it just busts out for whatever reason becomes inverted, it's going to dry out and die like the others. And this is a good example of a seedling gone wrong. It's inverted. So, yeah, I don't know why that keeps happening, but uh, 
either it's the very sticky soil that I used or the Lysol or the mold uh, you know realistically I don't think it can be the mold because why would a pathogen or a competing you know kingdom of a living thing try to invert you it, it just doesn't make sense unless they have some special chemical that can do that uh, maybe the Lysol has something that can make these seedlings go haywire. So the leaf itself looks very healthy, the first true leaf. And let me try to get some measurements. I'd still say this first true leaf is about an inch long. But now it's 15 sixteenths of an inch wide. So that seems to be a small improvement. The leaf itself has a better, healthier looking morphology right now. It's not furled up at the edges. Uh, I know there's a little bit of browning on some parts of the edges. Uh, like if you look here. But, you know, otherwise it looks a lot healthier than it was a few days ago now that it's had all this exposure to the sun. As regards to, you know, are the second and third and fourth true leaves developing? I really don't know. They seem very stagnant.